Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello and how are you doing? I'm very happy because today we welcome Emily Hennessy to Super Great Kids Stories. Emily is a wonderful storyteller based in the Lake District in Britain. The tale she's going to tell you today is from Iran. It's called The Three Dolls and it's got a riddle in it. Do you like riddles? Here's a riddle for you. What has hands but doesn't clap? Have a think about it while we have a quick word with the grown-ups and I'll be right back. Hello, super great kids, me again. Well, did you solve the riddle? What has hands but doesn't clap? Here's a clue. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Hurrah, you've got it, a clock. The story today is about a king who had a riddle to solve, but will he figure it out? Maybe with a little help from his friends. Have a listen. Put your riddle-solving cap on and see if you can help figure it out. Put your clapping hands together and welcome Emily Hennessy. There was once a king. A king who lived in a beautiful castle on the top of a hill overlooking his lovely city. Now this king had one favourite thing in the whole world and that was solving riddles. He loved nothing more than a really good, juicy riddle. And one day, a box arrived in the post for the king. And this box came with a letter. A letter that read, can you tell the difference between these three? Oh, goody, thought the king, my favourite thing. It's a riddle to solve. And so the king opened up the box and he rummaged through the tissue paper inside and found something. He pulled out ah, a beautiful hand-painted wooden doll. <laughs> it really was lovely. And he put the doll down on his desk. But there must be something more in this box. And so he put his hand into the box and rummaged through the paper and pulled out, ah, there we go, a second hand-painted wooden doll. And it was beautiful, just like the first. And so he put the doll down on the desk next to the first doll and then rummaged through the tissue paper once more and, ah, one more thing. He pulled out, ah, a hand-painted wooden doll. And it was beautiful just like the others and he put the doll down on the desk and then he set to work oh, can I tell the difference between them well there must be a difference between them so I will find it and the king picked up each doll and studied it long and hard picked up the first and the second and the third and looked at every single detail he even took out his magnifying glass but it was no good you see, the first looked exactly the same as the second, and the second looked exactly the same as the third, and the third looked, you got it, exactly the same as the first. Hmm. This must be a little bit of a trick, thought the king. I know. I will weigh these dolls. And so the king took out his scales, and he measured the first, and he measured the second, and he measured the third, but... They were all exactly the same weight. I know. I'll smell them, thought the king. <laughs> there we go. They'll all smell a little bit different. And so he gave the first a great big sniff. And the second. And the third. But they all smelt exactly the same. Oh, this is no good, thought the king. What can I do? What do you think? How could he tell the difference between these three dolls? Any ideas? Oh, interesting. 
Yeah, that's a really good idea. OK, let's do that. So he got out a great big bowl of water. And the king put all three dolls into the bowl of water. But no, they all floated. They all floated at exactly the same level in exactly the same way. Ha, huh, nice idea, though. Come on, any other ideas? What do you think? What could he do? Oh, yes, I like it. OK. The king lifted up the first doll and put his ear to it and listened. No, he couldn't hear anything. He gave it a bit of a shake. Nope, there was nothing inside. No rattle, no sound at all. He picked up the second, listened, gave it a shake. Ah, nothing. He picked up the third, listened, gave it a shake. Ah, nothing. Ah, that was a good idea, though. Come on, any other ideas? Ah, oh, the king needed some help. The king decided that he would summon the wise old woman from the city. And so in came the wise old woman, uh, bent over and hobbling along with a little walking stick and scratching the little hairs on her chin. I need your help, said the king. This riddle is driving me crazy. Can you tell the difference between these three? And so the wise old woman, she went and had a good long look at the dolls. She studied them long and hard. She scratched the hairs on her little chin and she frowned. And finally she said, they're very beautiful. I know they're beautiful, said the king, but can you tell the difference between them? But the wise old woman just shook her head. And so she was sent away. If the wise old woman can't help me, then who can, thought the king. Ah, maybe the fool will be able to help, because sometimes the fool is the cleverest of all. And so the fool was summoned. The fool, the jester, the joker, in he came. Your Royal Highness, he said, would you like to see my latest juggling tricks? And he took out three mangoes and began to juggle. No, 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 said the king. We haven't got time for that. I need you to help me. Can you tell the difference between these three dolls? And so the fool put his mangoes away and looked at the dolls. He studied the dolls long and hard. He frowned. He looked at them from all angles. And finally, he picked them up and began to juggle with them. Well, said the king, enough of this juggling. Can you tell the difference between these three? Have you solved the riddle? But the fool just put the dolls back on the desk and said... Well, they're very beautiful. I know they're beautiful, said the king, but what's the difference between them? But the fool just shook his head, and so the fool was sent away. Well, if the wise old woman can't help and the fool can't help, then... Ah, I know who might be able to help, thought the king. And the king summoned the city's storyteller. And in came the storyteller. A young man in a long, dark cloak. And the king said, now, I need your help. Can you tell the difference between these three? Uh, whatever you do, don't tell me that they're beautiful. I know that already. And so the storyteller came and had a good look at these three dolls. And then he reached over to the king and did the strangest thing. He plucked a hair from the king's head. Ow! That hurt! What on earth are you? doing. But the storyteller just picked up the first doll and carefully fed the king's long straight grey hair in through the ear of that first doll. And the hair went all the way in through that little hole in the ear until it was gone. And the storyteller smiled. And then the storyteller reached over to the king's head once again and plucked, ow, a second long straight grey hair from the king's head and picked up the second doll and fed the hair in through the ear of the second doll. And this time the hair went in through one ear and then came out of the ear on the other side. And the storyteller smiled. The storyteller reached over, plucked another hair from the king's head, ow, and fed this hair in through the ear of the third doll. And it went in 
and in and in and then. This hair came out of the third doll's mouth. Curly. Well, said the king, have you solved the riddle? And the storyteller said, I think I might have done. You see, I think this first doll here is a wise person's doll. You see, the hair went in through the ear of this doll and stayed inside. And what goes in through the ear of the wise person <laughs> stays inside. And this second doll, I think this is a fool's doll, because what goes in through one ear comes straight out the other. And this third doll here, I think this is a storyteller's doll. Because what goes in through the ear then comes out of the storyteller's mouth. Well, this is all very well, said the king, but oh, in solving this one riddle, you have left me with another riddle. My hair is straight. Why has it come out of the storyteller's doll's mouth curly? Well, that's easy, said the storyteller, because when the storyteller listens to the story, they then change the story. They transform the story. They retell that story, adding their own little curl to the tail. And the king was delighted. The riddle was solved. And the storyteller was invited to stay all evening long and share stories with the king. And now it's your turn. It's your turn to become the storyteller to take this story that you've just heard and to retell it. But remember, make it your own. Change it. Transform it. Add your own little curl to the tail. Thanks very much, Emily, for that story. I particularly like it because it shows the importance of being good at listening. That would be a good story to try telling to a friend or a grown-up. Why don't you have a go and change it to make it your special story? Or perhaps you could draw us a picture of the three dolls. Our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash stories. I'd love to see any pictures of your stories or Perhaps you could share a riddle with us. And now dipping into my bag of thank yous. Hello to brothers Oliver, who is three, and Sebastian, who is seven in Guernsey. They got in touch via Facebook to say they like listening to super great kids stories on the school run. Hurrah, that's great to hear. Thank you, Sebastian and Oliver. If you'd like to review us on Apple and help other children to find our stories, then that would really put a wag in my tail. And thanks so much to all of you who are supporting us on Apple Podcasts. It's really heartening. If you'd like to support us, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, where you can listen ad-free, get early access to the next story, and get one super great bonus story a month. Or if you'd like to support us on Ko-fi, go to ko-fi.com forward slash super great kids stories. Thank you, and thank you all for listening. See you soon. Keep telling those stories. <laughs> <laughs>